you know, but it'll probably get posted in the next okay. four weeks. Okay, cool. So the first thing, um, you can look right into the lens, say your name. Get Gregory. And you're watching Real Black. And you? And you're watching Real Black. Okay. Hey, just get Gregory and you're watching Real Black. Real Black Black. Real Black 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 Black. <laughs> It's an honor to have you on the show. Thank you for doing this, agreeing to do this. Um, we've had so many great people on, and I've always wanted to meet you. So. Thank you. The first thing, we're talking about black film. Like, we, we talked to a lot of people about their opinions on black film and um, the current state of black cinema. How would you define, what is your definition of black film? Just what you said, black film. Does black any, film. One thing I would change is, is black film in a white racist system. Okay, because? And the blackest film that's ever been made was made by a white boy, Tarantino, and Django Unchained. Never been nothing like that. that you really like that one? I went 46 times to see it. Well, why, why do you say it's the blackest black film? Because it was a story of a black man and a black woman, a love story, and it wasn't no fucking, no drinking, no cussing. Never have that ever happened in the history of Hollywood. Never, never, never. no sex. Hmm? And it's a real story. See, it probably couldn't have ran if we knew that Jamie Foxx played the role of the first person who died at Harper's Ferry with, 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 with uh, John Brown. He went there with 26 people, five black, and Dangerfield newbie was the first person. They found a letter in his pocket, and that was the letter they was talking about in the film with his wife. My problem was uh, I knew the story of, of John Brown. If I had to take everybody that's ever lived in the history of the planet, including Jesus, not God, and Jesus, and write them in order, John Brown would be ahead of Jesus Christ. And most black folk don't even know that. Wow. Why? Jesus came here to die for our sins. Okay? John Brown didn't come here to die for our sins. He was a white man that somewhere a conscience was there. And think about John Brown, the greatest movement in the history of the planet was a group of white folks, abolitionists, especially up in Boston way, abolition. Now, they didn't get paid. They was talking about freeing black folks and there was no bounty on how many black folk you can free. And the reason John Brown is my hero, I will die. You got to go a long ways to get blacker than me. He took his two sons with him, two sons with him. I'm not taking my grandchildren with me. And if it was back when my youngsters, my children was going, I wouldn't take them with me. He did, a white man. Now, are you drawing? Had it not been for him, we wouldn't be here now. I mean, America. It was that raid on Harper's Ferry that tipped off the Civil War. Now, like, uh, Django got a lot of criticism for the use of the N word. Let, let me tell you something about black folks. Did you see the Abraham Lincoln movie? You see how many times they used nigga? Nobody criticized that. Did you see the butler? Nobody criticized that, okay? It's a game they play. That's what I said in the beginning. Black movies in racist Hollywood? I mean, think about that. Here's a white man put a movie together where Jamie Foxx, Jamie Foxx, and that white boy was blowing white folks' head off and they showed the blood splatting on the wall. That's why I said I went to see it. I don't give a damn what it did for anybody else. I know what it did. All my life I've been to movies. 
before there was television. Man, I sit there and cried when I saw Jamie Foxx ride in town. Why? I've only seen white boys in cowboy movies. They didn't even have black buckwheats in cowboy movies. That was all white. And they fouled me up so bad that goes to a cowboy movie and pulled for the cowboy over the Indian, okay? And so I'm sitting there and watch Jamie Foxx and this white boy stroll into town. And when that white woman said, a nigga on a horse? And then they rolled up, got off the horse, and tied the horse there to the stall, man. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, I mean, you've been in this game for a minute. Like, how, how do you think it's changed, or has it changed, uh, as long as you've seen it, black films, black filmmaking? Well, I don't get it that many black films. You know, it's black folks in film, but they're not black folks in film. We accepted black film without any restrictions because the movies was the most powerful thing in the history of the planet. Why? Because you could make a mistake and correct it. You took your camera out there to a fire and, and that, and, and you missed it, you can't. But you could correct it. You could slant it any way you wanted it to go. And so, how do I not treat myself to the most powerful thing in the world? Hmm? And so, and I didn't care who you was, just a black face. Probably one of the biggest money makers, not now, at that time was Step and Fetch It. Most folks don't know that. I mean, more money than white folks made. Why? Because when white folks looked at him, he was strengthening their stereotype. And when I looked at him, I just saw a black person. See, it didn't bother me because I knew that black doctors as a boy. He's in the family. Black school teachers, black principals. White folks never had a balance at all. They saw him. And plus, well, you know what a good actor he is, he was probably the number one pimp in the history of America. Uh, so for him to come from that road, had a stable of nothing but white women in L.A. and had 43 Bentleys. So you got to understand what kind of actor he was when he can take that character off. And say, how's the boss? Uh, whatever y'all need, huh? Oh, did you ever get a chance to meet him or any of the early, those, those guys that had to, that were forced to play those stereotypes? Anything? No, they weren't forced. It was, we don't give them no break, man. Huh? So a whole lot of women would starve to death before they would sell pussy to feed their children. They would believe death is better. So we always want to come up and pick up some slack. Soldiers going to war, huh? To kill folks you don't even know and come back and they shoot your mom in the back of the head and you ain't gonna go get no gun. No, 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 no. See, that's the beautiful thing now. There's a new mindset coming through that ain't gonna tolerate none of that crap that they told us at all. My mother, if she was alive today, she'd call the police on me most of the shit I be saying. Why? My mother. Raised six of us by herself. Hmm? Two weeks after New Year's, she did other jobs so she could raise money that we would have a good Christmas. Hmm? And they told me a white boy brought it to me. Hmm. Hmm? There's no excuse for that, even if it was my mama. Huh? None whatsoever. Can you imagine a Jew bringing toys and stuff to their children and telling them Hitler and the Nazis brought them? Hmm? That's, see, the most ignorant, stupid things that ever happened to me, everything I was doing bad, the Ku Klux Klan did, I got it from my mama at home. Hmm. At home. So you talk about this new crop of people. I mean, what from your perspective, what do you think is the current state 
of black film today? Well, see, I don't see that many films. And there's not that many black film to, to, to judge from, you know. But you, you've seen Bell, right? Um, you talked about seeing Bell on one of your podcasts. Yeah. And 42. But that's not a, you mean the, the girl in London? The movie, the England, the English Yeah, but movie. that ain't no black film. You serious? How many black folks did you see in that film? See, this is the problem. That's a white film. When I hear you say black film, I thought you were talking about black folks that time. Hmm? Well, it's a black director and, and writer. In what? In For Bell. Yeah. You know. So, so everybody go to the movie know that that's a nigga that did that. Come on, man. You know it because this is your job. Huh? You know what's in the hamburger meat if you grinding it up. I don't know when I'm eating a hamburger. So you bringing your professional stuff in here and think my mama under, she don't understand that. Black film to black folks is how many black folks do you see? Huh? There'll come a day when you are a black person that's already directed film with no black folks in it. But that ain't a black film to me. The mind ain't ready for it. We so far behind on it, you know. And so uh, I, I, I tell people, uh, Bell, 20 years or 50 years before they can do another movie to equal that. And if I had to close my eyes and look at it and say, who wrote that? Right. Because of the technology, there are more films being made by black people. Than well, ever. see, you know that. Right. Huh? You know that. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Yeah. But people who don't, don't know that. Hmm? Right. You know, how many, how many black folks in America has a McDonald's franchise? Hmm? If you was a business person in that, you would know. I don't know. Right. Okay. Right. So I'm just setting you up. I'm just setting you up. I'm, yeah. throwing, you, I'm throwing you a softball. Yeah. So, you know, last year there were more black films made in, there are like 20 by, that were released nationally theatrically, mm -hmm. um, including, uh, and the most, the biggest grocers were like 42 which was directed by a white person, yep. but it was about Jackie Robinson mm -hmm. and The Butler. Those made over $100 million mm -hmm. each. Um, the year before that, The Help was a big hit. Mm -hmm. You know, made over $100 million. You know, why do you think that the the stories and the 12 Years a Slave won the Academy Award? You know, do you see a trend in those types of films? Yeah, I look at 12 Years a Slave as a trick, man. I, I, I didn't buy into that bullshit, you know. And... Uh, the guy that said it wrote it, he didn't write it. I know that. You know, it's like uh, somebody called me when what's the guy, the, the spook that sit by the door, Greenleaf. He didn't write that. Well, let's take it real simple. How come he didn't do another book? Hmm? See, I I don't even believe. The great book that sold uh, 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 the Invisible Man. I don't believe he wrote that. How you do one book that brilliant can't do another one? Hmm? I buy that. Huh? About forty-five years ago, I was in Paris. Hmm? My phone rings. Hmm? Dick Gregory, so and so, so and so. Got something you need to see? Can we come up? No, I'll, I'll come down. I'll come down. Give me a script. See, we'd like to leave this with you. Come back tomorrow and see what you think of it. I don't read nothing overnight for nobody. I started reading this and I couldn't stop. It was called The Nigger That Sit By The Door. And I said, wow, man, what a, whew. This is yours. Is this some kind of trick? I put it out. And then somebody comes and says, he didn't write. No, no, no. I said, oh, no, no, that's, that's yours. I said, well, let, let me tell you, I like this so well. Let me read through it. And if I can make enough changes in it that I can feel that it's mine without changing it, then and I never called him back or talked back. And the next thing I know, I see this piece of shit coming out. In the real one, those were white folks getting killed. And this one is in Chicago, 
and black folks killing black cops. Huh? So they called me and said he died. I know, not me. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was dead. Right. So, and but in terms, of, there's like like the most successful black films. Um, you know, from my from my perspective, they tend to treat racism as if it were something that happened in the past. You know, like the help or 42, like yeah. like racism, prejudice was something that was conquered in the 50s mm -hmm. and 60s. You know, why, why do you think these types of movies get all the money or make more? We don't hundreds know if they're getting money. Hundreds, hundreds of millions, whereas... We don't know station. if they're making money. Let me tell you, if they take a book of yours and want to make it a bestseller, they buy thousands of copies and throw them in the ocean. And that week you come up on the New York Times bestseller, buying all that bullshit, man. In no shape, form, or fashion. I know what they do. Hmm? And they do it so much, even when a real one comes through, I have to question it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, do you think of film as a form of pro social programming? or Sure, it's always been. Okay. It's always been. All right. So let's, let's go back then. Um, you, you talked about how when you were growing up watching well, well, let me Let me ask you something. Sure. Did you see the movie uh, The Wizard of Oz? Mm-hmm. Go back and see it again. That's about the Kansas City First National, uh, Kansas City Federal Reserve. Hmm? That's what that's about. Did you see the movie King Kong? Mm -hmm. hmm? That's about Jack Johnson and the white women. Huh? What's a gorilla doing in New York? Ain't no trees and Lord no, it ain't no bananas. What's there? The boxing capital of the world, Madison Square Garden. So sometimes you look at it and you don't see the cold, see through the cold. Mm -hmm. uh, the other side of midnight. Uh, is about Kennedy did not die in Dallas. He was a vegetable. Okay, and then if you look at the the uh, uh, the uh, the movie that Frank Sinatra did made the uh, oh Manchurian Candidate. Yeah. Now, when that came out, before Kennedy was hit, and they realized the big boys that's they paid Sinatra and them hundreds of millions of dollars to pull that off the market for X amount of years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now they know it's getting ready to come back on, so Denzel Washington, he don't know him, he's just an actor. He don't know nothing. Brilliant actor, that's all I expect out of him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when, they, they, when Denzel Washington did the Manchurian Candidate, it was different. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so all the young folks is born that saw the Manchurian candidate, they didn't see the real one. They didn't see that Lee Harvey Oswald mm. was treated the same way with brain control. You know? So that's what they do. They, they can do that anytime they want because they empower. You know, what's dangerous is when the universe pick you and you put on the magic glasses, there's rules that go with them. You can never take them off. You never see things that they're supposed to be. You see things as they are. And you can never force nobody else to wear them. So I read all the papers, not because I trust none of them to look for the crack in the fabric. Mm. You think a mighty nation like this would have the Washington Post and the New York Times and don't have CIA agents and FBI agents on? You think the evening news ain't got agents on there that we grew up with? We Think they know it's the game they play. Were you, were you always a questioner? Did you always question us? No. Why would I? Shit, I like bubble gum and tutti frutti and you know? and as I got into comedy, I'll tell you this and I'll go back to mm -hmm. Rodney King. I'm in Chicago. Black club, I get up with the newspaper and make fun of the white folks. Mm -hmm. Sun Times, Chicago Tribune. So, three rich billionaire white women was murdered at a reservoir called Star Park and raped. So, they arrest one white boy, and I get up my whole paper and say, Now, watch this here. One man can't rape three women and sex maniacs don't run in pairs. So what they tell me. Huh? Mm -hmm. I'd hit this every night. 
And I said, and they not just ordinary white women. They sports like white women. Mm. You have to be something walking in 22 inches of snow. Mm. Mm. So one night, one Saturday, I looked down, and there's three white boys. Mm -hmm. Four. Ain't laughing or nothing, just sitting there. So I finished and get up, walk back, white boy said, come here, boy. Said, your motherfucking mama's a boy. Your mama's a boy, you. He pulls his shit on oh, that. <laughs> I thought you were going to show him your dick, you mm -hmm. faggot cracker. Hmm? <laughs> so he gets, to, his partner comes up and says, Mr. Gregory, he's just a little upset he had a problem tonight. I said, oh, you almost had a problem. I did some funny shit and you know y'all laugh. Mm -hmm. So I walked to the dressing room. And he said, you know, he crazy. He could have shot you. Uh-uh, I'm crazy. Mm. Y'all think y'all know crazy niggas. Y'all know criminals. Hmm? <laughs> I'm crazy. Hmm? So he said, well, here's the problem we got. I, said, I want to hear about your problem. Hmm? I come here and I make $10 a night. And I'm not taking no shit off nobody. I go out there and I do my work. And I come out. So then he brings another guy in. And he said, Mr. Gregory, uh, I hate everything you do about the Star of Rock thing, but one of them women was my wife. So I'm willing to give you this $5,000 if you drop that out and say, fuck you, go tell your mama, you don't get out of here. Mm. Then I knew I had something. Mm. 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 I knew I had something. Because? Ten dollars a night, three nights a week? Mm-hmm. And this white boy gonna bring me five thousand dollars to stop doing something that he don't like? Whew. So after that, I, I'd always looked at the paper. Mm -hmm. I'd always ask questions, you know. Uh, the devil. I was a little boy. You couldn't ask around ignorant black people. How come I ain't never seen a fat devil? Hmm? I see fat preachers, fat popes, Buddha fat. Hmm? How come I ain't never seen the devil in a dirty uniform? Hmm? Mm -hmm. How come I ain't never heard the devil cussing and talking loud? Hmm? Then as I get bigger, I increase it. I can go all over the world right now and recognize a prostitute. You know. The street walkers, you can't recognize the, the real ones who go to Vassa with PhDs and stuff. That's another story. Mm -hmm. So I'm, see this prostitute? You can too, you can recognize her. By their demeanor, their wig, the way they swing their head. But if you don't tell me you're a Christian, I don't know you one, there's something wrong with that. I can recognize a hoe without her telling me. Mm -hmm. But what's wrong with your demeanor that you have to tell me? You're a Christian. Whew. So I've been doing that all my life. Huh? Simple question, man, that the, my little grandchildren ask me now. Granddad, God sent Jesus here to die for our sin. I say, that's what they say. Well, how come he didn't just kill the devil? What do you think about that? If the devil is making us do that, and it ain't but one devil, kill him. Why send your son? And then when I heard what Jesus said on the cross that last day, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? Don't that sound like a nigga trying to get away? Right. Mm -hmm. That's all you have to do is just, and that's all I did, was just sit and ask. I couldn't ask too many questions around the old folks mm -hmm. because their ignorance, there was no room for that. And I can understand that. If the three of us was at a conference 120 years ago and and we say one day horses will be obsolete. They wouldn't even examine. They'd take us right to a mental hospital. Mm. Because yeah. that's all we've had for thousands of years is horses, and there's no room to change that. Right. But, and so what I'm saying is the question you asked, I've been doing that. 
for a long time. Groundhog Day. If the groundhog sees the shadow six more weeks of winter, so I tell my little friend, Boo, I say, look here, man. I got this calendar I made. Mm -hmm. February the 2nd, see here, right here? Mm -hmm. Now spring is March 21st. So there's two calendars, two, two sheets. And I said, if you count from February the 2nd, or as I said, six more weeks of winter, mm -hmm. from February the 2nd to March 21st is six weeks. Right. The groundhog ain't got nothing. I've been doing that all my life, man. Right. I mean, you're a philosopher. I mean, you know, even like your your best albums, you're, you're you're causing people to think. Yeah, but that wasn't what I was doing. I was me. I was talking to me. When I dress up and go to your daughter's wedding, that's for me. Hmm? They might have fatigues on the barefooted. Huh? I'm going to something that I think is important because I know you. So I dress the way a white racist system say you're supposed to dress. Or something important. The mob do the same thing. That don't mean they're clean, you know. And then I've been knowing for a long time. The only reason the CIA and the FBI and British intelligence, the reason I'm ahead of them, hmm? mm -hmm. they represent filth and slime and darkness. We represent light. Mm -hmm. And there's no darkness in the world. That's what I love about. Nighttime, mm -hmm. I get up and watch the sun come out. Sun come out and smack nighttime. Clean out the sky. It don't listen to no eye. Oh, wait, let me get, let me get two more. Pop, and it's gone. That's the power of light. And when you don't understand you light, then things change. Huh? They got niggas believing they dark. Huh? You go into a dark room and strike a match. <laughs> and the room gets light. If you walked in this room today and it was 10 million cockroaches in here and 300 rats, huh? you can't shoot them. You turn the light on and they will leave. That's the role of darkness. But when light gets scared of darkness, then you violate the universe. You violate so, the universe. So that's your job. No, I don't look at it as my job. I just get up and do it. That's, that's me, you know? Then I'm willing to die for it, huh? So When I hit big and made more money than anybody was making an entertainment, it wasn't for my wife and family, hmm? Mm -hmm. It wasn't for them. It was for black folks. Why? Why black folks? When I started off in comedy, little bitty old ratty nightclubs, black folk come in. That's all I had. They listened to me when I wasn't funny. And when they got through listening, I was so funny, they pushed me all the way downtown where they couldn't afford to come see me. So I got to go back. Mm -hmm. I have to go back. That's why I'm always listed in the phone book. Don't have no bodyguards. Mm -hmm. And so this is the game. And so when you, you, know, you sit and you see that, you don't have to be validated by nobody. I mean, when it was the last time. Black publication, Dick Gregory was listed with the top 100 black folk. Never. But here's a book out that says 1,100 people who made America. This is a game. And once you get tied up in the game. So what's, what's your legacy? How, how would you like to be remembered? I don't see you keep reaching back to that bullshit. Okay. I know who I am. And if I voted for myself for something on the tombstone, be simple. He had no hidden agenda. I don't care what nobody think about me. Can you imagine if a welfare mother told Rockefeller he broke, if he reacted to it, I'd take my money out to Chase Manhattan Bank. Hmm? Hmm? Anybody that come to defame me is either the government or crazy. When I need you to define me, I'm in trouble. This is a game. Huh? Why'd you get me? Some letter. My wife read it. She controls me. Mm -hmm. Black woman and the black church is the two most powerful forces in the history of America, and we don't know that. Mm. Black woman. Huh? Because they lie on her, they lie on us. For instance, 
I got 10 children. If I left them children, <laughs> white folks stand and said, those children going to be affected. No man at home. The right. problem in the black neighborhood, there's no black man at home. But if I go to war and get killed, they never said that's going to affect my children. Ain't that funny? As long as I'm getting killed for white folks, it's okay. But if I just walk off from her, oh, the baby's going to be, oh, the baby's going to, come on, y'all. Hmm? Right. This is a game. Honky, 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 honky. <laughs> you know? so, See, prostitution is made for the benefit of white men. Hmm? Okay, I get pussy free. I don't mean as a celebrity. Right. I get pussy free. So we running prostitutes off the corner one day in St. Louis. And I'm on this TV show, and I said to this white boy, I said, we out there cause prostitution for the benefit of white men, so I'm trying to send them to sit in front of the First National Bank. He said, you mean uh, a black man don't have Oh Yeah, I have her. She's my sister. I get her when she come home after she got your money. I get her for free when she's wet. I ain't never had to pay for it. <laughs> and so it's that whole... That, that, that. So when, when did you discover or realize that it was all a game? You don't. It's like growing your hair grow. If you can feel your hair grow, you go crazy. You just look around and realize you got to go to the bar. You don't feel nothing. You, what's dangerous is when the universe kick you and you put on the magic glasses, there's rules that go with them. You can never take them off. You never see things that they're supposed to be. You see things as they are. And you can never force nobody else to wear them. So, so let's let's talk real real quick, just in terms of um, so film and social programming. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of these films that take place in the fifties and sixties that involve black people treat treat as if. Racism is over. Is something that happened in the past. Um, I mean, do you think that that's true? That we sure, but let me ask you something, man. If a brother will lie to get some pussy, what do you think a white boy do to control the whole world? Huh? Huh? That's like sitting here complaining about Hitler and the Nazis. They was doing that long before Hitler came along, and we missed what them Hitler and them Jews what they were saying. He said he gonna make a perfect race. He was talking about Germans. He's talking about killing them misfit Germans. That's what he said. I mean, World War I and World War II wasn't white folks attacking Africa or black boy. They were attacking each other. Hmm? I'm looking at a white boy. The white woman in America didn't get the right to vote until 1921. That's his wife. That's his girlfriend. That's his daughter. She came over on the boat with him. Boy, what a fool I got. Hmm? Think about that. Mm -hmm. if, if, if I impregnate your sister, Hmm? Half that's mine. To all them slaves, he was knocking up half that. He can't nothing about it. If you don't care nothing about that, he don't care nothing about nothing. Hmm? So that's where I look at it now. I look back and I, I see it and I, I look at it. Uh, and the power that they have, the real ones. I told the audience last night, if ever I took over America, I'd make you black folks apologize to white folks because you mad at the wrong white folks. The white folks you mad at couldn't help you if they liked you. Hmm? Hmm. If the Ku Klux Klan would have done this year what the Supreme Court did was mess with the voting, have I? we'd be still complaining. Powerful white folks do it. Don't say a word. You know, we're really stupid enough to believe that the Ku Klux Klan, a bunch of ignorant, redneck crackers that can't read or write, determines public policy. The Tea Party. Do you think the Tea Party, white businessmen in America is the most powerful, cruel, evil, most of them, on the planet. You think they would let the Tea Party shut this government down if they didn't want it? What are the politics in Hollywood? Whatever the, the people who run the world want, that's what the politics are. Hmm? Huh? Okay. They glamorize war. Man, I couldn't wait to get to the war. Wasn't no TV, huh? It's a woman thing. Every Hollywood movie you saw, a woman, man, a woman. John Wayne died. Before he died, he, he tell his friend to tell <coughs> Betsy I love her. Hmm? Then we get TV in the 50s in Vietnam. 
And I'm listening to dude say calling for mama. Mama, call mama. Come. And that's why they can't get the military together. Because the children saw it. And war ain't glamorous. War is not Hollywood. That's what they do. They throw that whole, that whole piece there. The whole piece there. Right. Let's bring it back to Django real quick because we had the sound. We had a sound problem there. Like, like you said that that was the first time you saw a hero that you could relate to in Western. Was no, Django. only white folks was my hero. Man, when Martin Luther King came through talking about, now John Wayne was my hero. Man, John Wayne said, "You got a gun, and and they got a gun." And you right and they wrong, kill them. That was my hero. That sounded good to me. Then King come by and said, don't kill me. Oh, King, you came too late, man. I'll go with you, but don't tell me. And then when I got to see that movement, see it, old folks, young folks, with no fear. Huh? I remember this one brother, they kept beating and stomping and he wouldn't get up till he got his hat, man. Put his hat back on. <laughs> they caught him in, kicked him, and stomped him. In. I, mean, I never thought I'd see the day I'd sit here and tell a person, like I'm telling you, I'd rather be killed by somebody than kill somebody. That's what that movement did for me. So who's going to take the weight? Like, what? how are things, what's happening now? So, what do you mean? Who's going to take the what? The weight. Like, a lot of, a lot of, these leaders and the movement, a lot of people, like, a lot of people think things are fair. Like, a lot of people don't want to, like, there was a case last week, um, this black, half black woman uh, was suing her university. Well, you know, black folks, y'all sometimes worse than white folks. A nigga got a right to be crazy? Huh? A nigga got a right to be crazy? You act like we don't have a right to be crazy. Huh? Okay. I have a right to sell drugs. Huh? I have a right to be gay. So all you black folks sitting around talking about these youngsters with these pants below their butt. Who gave you the power to be the overseer of niggas? Huh? I remember when I was a little boy, we didn't have TV. Big bulletin, bulletin, talking about this big crime that happened. First thing my Christian mama said, <gasps> I hope it wasn't a Negro. Well, who do you hope it was, mama? Jew or Italian? Huh? I didn't hear the Christian thing come out of you, mama. I hope it didn't happen. Huh? This is a game, man. And you and these youngsters, thank God these youngsters can't give a damn about what old black folks think. Huh? They couldn't care less. Hmm? Right. You hear about well, uh, uh black folks is like a a bunch of crabs in a pot of hot water. Once one gets to the top, they pull them down. That's the water that's making them do that, nigga. It ain't the crabism. And all y'all come with that whole foggy bullshit. That's why they stop listening to you. They don't give a damn. Bitches and hoes, bitches and oh, all, all these black folks is mad. They didn't get mad at James Brown when he said, shake your money maker. What's a money maker? It's a vagina that the universal God, not the church, gave you. And when you sell it, it's called a money maker. They all be out there doing what he said. Then he came up with a song, big song. It was a lie. I'm black and I'm proud. He should have done, should have been. Now I'm black and I'm proud. Because there's one time he had so much conquering on his head, he looked like something in the zoo. Huh? And so consequently, when you stop and think about, you know, where this thing is going, when you tell me, your son, how some perverted love you got for me, that you got to be twice as smart as a white person, Children don't hear what you mean. They hear what you say. So now they got tests now where they give black children same income, same this and that. With all blacks, Hispanics, and because of that social economic group, which they're all part of, all of them make a hundred. Then they take another group, same everything, and put some white children in there, and they flunk it. Because mama told me I was dumb. Hmm. Do you know what a violation it is when you teach me your son? You going out for the weekend, a bunch of white racist cops out there. Just they stop you, just behave, talk slow, and put your hands on. Them. Anytime you 
my daddy teach me to respect filth, you make me think there's something wrong with me. See, we don't know that. See, the problem in America is we're the only group of oppressed people, and few people have ever been oppressed like we were. Hmm? Rape my mama, rape my brother, hmm? impregnated my mama, hmm? cut babies out of her, hmm? cut my joint off and all that. Never have anybody went through that like we did. Hmm? And so now, we opt for education over liberation. You hear me? None of us liberated. George Washington wasn't beating up the British so he could open up a college. He didn't say, give me education, say, give me liberty, or give me death. Right now, you and him can worth, be worth $40 billion. 12 PhDs, y'all leave here to go back to Philly, driving your Rolls Royce, and you hear a siren. And you squeeze the steering wheel. You didn't have nothing to do with it. It's in your genes. Huh? Mm -hmm. It's in your fucking genes, man. And you don't know it. Right. Huh? But, but squeeze it. And then when that cop car passed by, you say, thank God. God ain't got nothing to do with it. He wasn't after you in the first place. Why you running, right? Okay. You say, wow, man, I like that feeling when I'm tired. So I got to move on. Hmm? So it's, uh, I just found out not too long ago with some research that vitamin... D, hmm? mm -hmm. not a it's a hormone. From the sun? Yep. No, the sun goes into the body and the body reacts to it and creates the hormone. Wow. And all the vitamin D you get in your body comes through your pores. From the sun. Okay. What they don't tell you is the vitamin D that goes to the brain comes through the eyes. That's why I don't know about it, but poor, ignorant folks wear sunglasses. Even them little white folks who think they rich, well, you've never seen Queen Elizabeth and serious white folk with no sunlight. You see Bill Clinton with sunlight. Here's yeah. one. I'm losing my hair. Could I prevent that, or is that genetic? Yeah, you can still prevent it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do I need to do? I want to get some hair. I want to look like these guys. Well, I don't want to get into that now while we're doing it. Okay, that's fine. All right. Um, Are we on? Yeah, we're back on. And so it's that whole piece that when it catches up, hmm, you know how sexist this planet is. Huh? Oh, your daughter get raped and you commit suicide. You've been disgraced. <laughs> Please. Hmm? And so when you stop and think about there's certain things you can't change. A sexist, 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 sexist system all over the world. And yet it's called the mother tongue. <laughs> Not the father tongue. Because when I come over here and they teach me how to talk white and niggas like me because I sound white, I violate God because the mother tongue. Hmm? A dog barks and another dog understands it. A cat meow, another cat. Nobody understands me because I'm tampered with my mother tongue, trying to appease white folks. Huh? Tampered with the mother tongue. Hmm? Yeah. Motherfucker, oh, that's a horrible, no, 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 no. We're going to get reparations, and that word's going to get us more money than anything ever happened. And you know who's going to get reparations for us? Them law firms that got 40% of the cigarette selling them. Huh? It'll depend on you, <laughs> all that. Crap, who's in there? Oh, we don't do this. Shut up, mama. Mm -hmm. And so here's how it works. When the English, and that was a great movie, Bells, see, Abraham Lincoln said something and made him, they made him so mad. He said, slavery is an American problem, and they went off. The nice folks. And Abraham Lincoln says, uh, the textile industry in New York City and in London make more money <laughs> in two weeks than the cotton farmers and slave owners make in five years. Hmm? Hmm? That's what they're talking about in that movie, man. That textile industry. Hmm. 
and so and that's what's happening now because of you all. You see, when I was a little boy, white children didn't need exposed to this. So when I was a little boy, nobody's born a racist or sexist. So the boy says, Mama, how come, how, how come black folks take all this off of, oh, they happy. Well, why can they, my mama says she's always happy. You was always smart. Hmm? She at their house on Christmas fixing their food, and I ain't got nobody to fix my toys, mama. But know how it happened when the universe, the indicals here? Children ain't buying bicycles. Hmm? Did you hear me? They on the little skateboards, man. <laughs> <laughs> it just leaves and you don't even see it. Leaves and you don't even see it. And so when you stop and think about where this piece is, and the universal God don't have to tell you if you don't know it, then the black woman, her, Hurricanes. And then the women's movement, they said, well, you take something this bad and name it after women, so they throw men at the can't help them. Black runaway slaves invented hockey in Canada. <laughs> See who I am? Invented it. Then a the guy named Milton Stanley said, let's look at this here. Now it's called the Stanley Cup. <laughs> How can y'all get a handle ice? Oh, yes, yes. Two Olympics back. Jamaica's won the bobsled. They ain't got no snow. Hmm? Somebody figured out the way you win the bobsled is when you're running, you pick up that momentum. When you get on there, ice ain't got nothing to do with it. That centrifugal force. <laughs> That's when they learn how to run and <laughs> jump on the sled. And white folk couldn't handle them. And so. When, when a white boy, prostitution was always in the Negro neighborhood, for him. Mm. Well, none of his friends could see him. The mayor could come down from Chicago to 30 miles, 40 miles away. Nobody knew who they were. So they'd pull up in front of your house. Your mama ran it and honked the horn, and y'all would come out. So they know they safe and take them in the park. That's where the word honky came from. Okay. All right. So when the when the Europeans said there'd be no more see what I like about old white Christians, that's why I get my information from. They get old and aching and they want to go to heaven, so they try to purify stuff. Old white Christians come and talk to me. <laughs> I'm going to heaven. And so, in certain parts of Europe, if you was born a billionaire, you still get a check when you get 18 years old. That's that slavery money. It's like going to outer space. Once you get out there, you can't never come back. It just keeps coming and coming and coming and coming and coming. Mm -hmm. And so, they said to America, we trying to get to heaven. They didn't say that to us. No more slaves. We saw it in the movie. No more slaves. They didn't need the money. Got all the money. Hmm. So Americans said, well, what are we going to do? What are we doing? We got these slaves. We can't have no more. Nah, they don't know. How are we going to do it? So he made me, 14 years old, put a sack on my head and have sex. Fuck my mama. And he's so dumb, he didn't know mom knew that was me. But she couldn't do nothing because she didn't want him to get mad and start killing the slaves. Remember the story when God wanted to save the Jews? He told them to put one on the door. 
or more. You tell me God didn't know where the Jews was? What kind of God y'all talking about? Ooh, man, y'all scared shit out of me. You mean God who put the whole universe here didn't know it's a Jew in that house? You got to pray to God and tell God your rent due. Any God that didn't know your rent was due ain't God. Hmm? <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> Made everything, but didn't know your rent due. Hmm? People that tough do when they get in there. And so, I had to screw my mama, man. That's where the word motherfucker come from. And then white boy shit, that's why they hated the word until they got around black folks and realized, I said, it's motherfucking pair of glasses. And that's when he knew I didn't know. His jeans knew. And now you go to a white movie, they say motherfucker before they finish running the credits when the movie's coming on. Hmm? What he didn't know, if I impregnate my first cousin, there's a 98% that the baby be born deformed. Hmm? So what do you think happened when I start fucking my mama? Hmm? So all the deformed babies start coming down the chute. <laughs> he didn't know, he ignored, he don't know what it was. See, we blamed all that on women. That was what sexism did. See, we just thought there's nothing. We didn't know there was a seed in her. They didn't know that till the medical people found out in 1750. We just thought she was the incubator. You know, we make the, 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 the biscuits and take it by Mary's house and put it in her oven. That's what they thought. So the white boy said, well, here's how we get around there, all these old ignorant white boys that can't afford slaves. we we'll sell them to them. Hey, come here, Willie. There's some of these niggas here. Well, you know, I, I got no money, boy. No white man can call himself white without owning some niggas, so we're going to sell you these crippled ones. But you got to buy 12 of them. Now you see where the fucking dozens come from, and it's about your mama, and nobody on this planet played a dozen except black men in America and in the Caribbean. So what the fuck y'all know? Huh? The dozens, huh? And that's where the reparations money going to come. Because these youngsters coming up now under y'all's influence, they'll be outraged when they find this out. Hmm? And they're going to open up the floodgates when they get through. Even Africa's going to get a piece. Hmm? That's where it's going. Hmm? That's where it's going. Hmm? That's just. Hmm? Well, I hope that's true. Hmm? Ain't no hope. I don't give them fucking hope, man. Hope. Hope you're going to pay your goddamn rent. Hope your car work. Come on, man. Ain't nothing but bullshit. No, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying I think a lot of black people are being brainwashed. It ain't got nothing to do with them. Okay. And here, if you say I'd like to go to Paris this year, but I can't afford, you just told 75 trillion sales of C2 you don't get to Paris. Huh? That's who you are. And when you find that out, huh? When you find that out, when they told me I had the worst cancer you can find, Huh? I told my son, Doc, I said, don't show that to your mother, she ain't. Till after your sister get married. Then I gave her the report. Doc, could they do this? I said, Bill, you better get out of here. You think I'm leaving this pussy here again for your high school? So you told you out your mind. I ain't going nowhere. I know I'm not going nowhere. If you hope, hope don't work. You never heard no rich, powerful motherfucker say hope. Hope I win the war, but a fool. Hmm? The real folks know they're going to win the war before they start, except they don't count in the universe. Hmm? Universe. There's no such thing as hope. Hope. And so what happens is, the black woman, hurricanes. That's the black woman. That's our spirit. White folks know that. The real ones. And we don't. All hurricanes start at the exact spot in West Africa where the slaves was put on the ship. Not almost the, the right area where slaves was put on the ship. That's where hurricanes start. They stay on the water and follow the same route the slave ship followed. No slave was offloaded the ship till it got to the Caribbean. Hmm? <laughs> no hurricane jumps above water until it get to the Caribbean. 
hit this country and come all the way up the East Coast to Maine. Maine is as close to Canada as you are to me. Canada's never had a hurricane because Canada never messed with a sister like America has and get there, turn north and go back out. That's who you are. You think this goddamn camera, that little chump that you got, won't change? That ain't changing nothing. You already there. Huh? And we come in with this bullshit. Uh, think we know something. Uh, knowing something in a white racist system that would kill God if they could. What prestige is that? Final thoughts. Well, when I sit and think about the civil rights movement, the 50th anniversary, I was there two weeks ago, at Freedom, Mississippi summer, on the plane on the way to Jackson, Mississippi, I was with my, one of my daughters. And I was saying, you know, People who was 22 years old then, they'd be 72. People that's 30, be 80, we're going to see some old crippled folks. And to think about all the ones that's dead. So we get there, the plain land in Jackson. 12 black police chiefs is waiting for me to take me to the hotel. And I told, I said, I remember. Man, I come to Jack to be white cops, FBI, CIA, waiting to figure out how they could kill me. What a blessing to come. I said, daughter, I, every time I came to Mississippi, I knew they was going to kill me. But I came anyway. I didn't worry about my family because I was in the military before. I was married before you was born. And when they called me, had I been married with a family, I'd have gone. So we just put all this bullshit up to make like we worry about our families. I said, we here. What a blessing. I said, understand what that means, daughter. It means we took on the mightiest nation in the history of the planet that the whole world was scared of. And we didn't take no guns or no attitudes. And we won. We won. With all their trickiness, next time you see the picture of King on the balcony shot and see them black folks pointing up, mm -hmm. how'd they know it wasn't going to be another shot? Who were they? It's human nature for you to hit. Something comes to the way you hit. Well, they didn't. Hmm? Now you know. There wasn't going to be another shot. Mm -hmm. Malcolm, we sued and made the government give us the autopsies. Why? Come on, white boy, you know there wasn't no federal crime. Now do I need to go and tell the world on y'all? See, you make deals. I need this information because I got to teach my mama, but I won't talk about it. What was important about Malcolm is them guys were shooting up. He was on the stage. All the bullets that Malcolm went down, they gave them thugs blanks. <laughs> and that famous picture where the brothers giving him mouth, mouth to mouth. He's a New York undercover cop. He, He's so secret, his, his paycheck came from the utility company, not the police. You can see I ain't now. But see, you don't do mouth to mouth on a chest wound. You pull air bubbles to the lungs. So if you look at Malcolm's autopsy and James L. Ray's autopsy, Lee Harvey Oswald, they both died from the same thing, air bubbles to the lung. <laughs> they've already decided they're going to shoot you in the chest. They got the woman sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> And so, never before in the history of the planet have they went after somebody and killed everybody. When they hit Jesus, they didn't mess with the disciples. 
Julius Caesar, they didn't mess with the legislator. We the only people, man. They wiped them out one by one. Ran them crazy, framed them. Huh? One by one by one by one. And we still hmm, surviving. Education is not power. Money is not power. It's information. That's what y'all get. Information is power. If I give you wrong information, you got bad power. Hey, if you good information, you got good power. And you can't kill power. You know, it's like a soldier. Shoot one, the other, pick up that flag. They don't pick up each other. The medic picked them up. You pick up that flag and can't keep running. So I just say thank you and appreciate you. Love you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gregor. Love you back. Was the computer wrong or you got 9 million votes? I got 9 million votes because they plugged it up wrong. They made a mistake okay. and started and hooked it to my name, mm. okay, instead of Nixon's name. Okay. Hmm? So it was it good? How they were doing that all the way back in 1968. Huh? You what? They've no, been doing this. How they were fixing the election. No, 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 man. Since day one. Come yeah. on. After the village, the, 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 the space elevator, and then a brother from, uh, uh, what is it done? Virginia Tech invented, the, plan? invented the rod that you have to go okay. so they're ready to move now. I just wanted to see what it looked like through through this camera, that's all. Okay, but we're gonna we we'll probably put a video camera on that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so they in they in serious trouble. Well you tell me how do you like the, the image? Yeah, okay, but... So y'all show look y'all show been going good for a long time, huh? Oh yes. Yeah. 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 It reaches a lot of people. This is Dick Gregory and you're watching Real Black. I said, this is Dick Gregory and you are watching Real Black, 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 Black. And so to get back to your question of looking at stuff, uh, Rodney King. Uh, and I called Ralph in from Europe. I said, man, I just need to check something. I, I didn't see them. Huh? I said, I got a problem with two white folks. First time they ever been into America. And they just happened to check in the hotel where this beating's taking place. <laughs> so three days later, he called me and said, we need, we need to get out of here. Said, yeah. said, you know, it was two other people in the car with him. I said, yeah. He said, they died mysteriously. Mm -hmm. And he said, the weird part about it, Rodney King had been sentenced by a judge in L.A. to eight years in jail, and we can't figure out why he was out in the street three weeks later. Mm. I said, let's move. Mm. Let's move. Mm. And then I saw it seeing. We checked the two people. They're from Australia, heavily connected to the secret police in Australia, mm. heavily connected to the CIA. How do you, with your camera, never been in a country before, film it. They didn't know to take it where seven o'clock LA time is running all over the world. How do you know that? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, with the King thing, it was the verdict. It wasn't the tape. That uh, you're that. not hearing me. You're not hearing me. See, the problem is you trying to talk with your shit. You don't know nothing instead of listening, huh? I'm listening. Okay. No, no. I get $40,000, man, and I damn motherfucker. Talk. You went to college. You didn't talk when the professor was talking. Okay, I apologize. Because you bring, no, you don't apologize to me. I knew that when you come in here. I let you in because you just said New York Times, I don't let you in. I said anybody come in here, and normally I don't do these interviews. I do the bullshit shit you want to hear mm -hmm. and let you leave. Okay, I'm huh? listening. I'm listening. You got me tuned in. I'm tuned in. Okay. okay. So what was the question you just asked? No, my my question was like the the videotape, the existence of the videotape was the the fuse, but what sparked it was the verdict. The no, fact no, that... I know that more than you. Okay. Huh? I know that more than you. Okay. What they didn't tell you, hmm? what they didn't tell you, is just. Read what paper that is so you can hear you on the camera. Okay. Los An uh, on the, so on the side. New York Times, May 10th, 1992. Okay. What's the headline say? Los Angeles police differ sharply with prosecutors on arrest totals. Now, read the first sentence. 
reflecting confusion that has characterized the city's response okay, to violence. Okay, now go down to where you see I got that marked. Police officials said today... Slow, that, slow, slow, so my grandmother's listening. All right. Police officials said today they arrested 18,000 people from the when, from Wednesday night, April 29th, the day the riots began, through this morning. But prosecutors said that they could not account for as many as 10,000. That's arguing, stealing. You think it was something else. Ten, these ain't black folks talking. This ain't the, these are cops talking. And the prosecutor talking. Now read that sentence right but after that and listen what listen what Han says. We don't know where these people are. Wait a minute now, this one say we don't know where these people are. Said James K. Han, the Los Angeles City Attorney. He's the mayor now. See how the payoff comes? Mm. It's a mystery now to a lot of people in the system right now. Okay, that's all. That's that's my job. Okay. Huh? That's my job. And I usually don't share it with people. Because mm -hmm. like I told you before, my mama hear the shit. I'll be saying she called police on me. Huh? Mm. And so that's what I'm telling you now. So about six months ago, I'm in L.A. And uh, Carl Nelson, who invented the, on the Stevie Wonder station, he invented the, uh, the morning show, the biggest show in L.A., mm -hmm. talk show. Mm -hmm. And so then he left and went to Florida. So now he's back out there celebrating the 20th anniversary of that show. Mm -hmm. So I go on on Friday. Let's talk about it. I was out there for something. And he said, Dick, uh, 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 you be here Monday. You ought to come in. I'm, I'm interviewing... Uh, Rodney King, he got a new book coming out. So you better do it quick, cause he be dead before the week's over. Wow. Cause how did I know? Cause I got the information. The woman in the house where he died, his girlfriend, she was one of the jewelers when he got that three million dollar kick out. <laughs> okay. Mm. <laughs> and the neighbors said they heard screaming and hollering. They said you say just drown. <laughs> A brother who can't swim don't put no swimming pool in his house. <laughs> and so what I'm saying is, is when you know this, you can smell it. And then you see it. Right. And so you look at it. And then I pushed the right button. I was in, I was in, uh, you had a brother here in Philly mm, that had a, a, a health product. So Father Clemens came to me and said, man, you ought to be part of this. I said, no, man. It's nothing to eat. <laughs> they heal anything. All right. So when the sniper was out there in D.C., he's one of the brothers, the brother from Philly that was killed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, um, he I just understand. went. Ken. Huh? Uh, Ken um, Bridges. Ken Bridges, yes. He was. He just went to North Carolina to, to talk to uh, the black uh, uh, hair product guy. Yeah, he had a group. Um, yeah. I forgot the name yeah. of the group, but Ken Bridges. Um, and so. Uh, my tie. My yeah, my tie. tie. So he got a hundred million dollar bridge loan, and mm -hmm. he was going to buy eighty five percent. Eighty five percent of the. She was uh, in uh, British Columbia, okay. Guiana. Okay. Pow, that's when he put the hit on him. Because if you look at that route, he came back. That's not the route you come back to Philly from North Carolina. <laughs> you see it. Then you look at the, the guy. You remember the head of that whole investigation of the sniper? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Was a black sheriff. Hmm? Moose. Yes. In D.C., yeah, D.C. No, 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 outside, Montgomery County. Montgomery County. So they made the hit in Montgomery County so he could take over the whole thing. Hmm? Moose, and then they eventually, Muhammad, John Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Him and John Muhammad was in the same National Guard unit in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> wow. Now, the reason that's important, they got many Negroes in Portland, Oregon. How could you forget that? Huh? See how it works? And he was the one telling the FBI agency, just look for a white man. 
Everything you heard, every witness said it was a white man in a white pickup truck. They was good two black folks in a raggedy car that sleep on a parking lot after they bought them some church's chicken. Huh? They kidnapped both of them six months before and put them in a warehouse and let them go. We ain't heard none of them talk. <laughs> none of them talk. So this is the game. When the uh, when they you look at the uh, September the 11th, we're the only country that. When we give you the date, we give you October the 12th, September. And so why they come up with 911? That's the emergency call. So anytime you say it, you tell your brain to be scared. That's where they are. That's how close, how much research they've done. Like, so I'm in New York, September the 10th, September 11th. So I call my wife. I said, well, you got me sleeping tonight. She said, you're not your friend call from Paris and say, don't spend the night in New York tonight. Wow. I get on a train, go to D.C. I get there at 4 o'clock. I call the dude in Paris. How you know I was in New York? Punked. I said, we picked you up on the satellite, brother. <laughs> So then I go walk and I come back and the other one then went down. I called back. He said, you owe me one, punk. Wow. <laughs> See, this is how it work. It's a club. Yeah. Huh? Y'all go places, y'all see stuff and you know when it's been spliced and when it's not spliced, you know it's been tampered with. I do the same thing with the whole human thing. Hmm? I've been out here so long and had the money to bring in the top people. I need you to look at this. Look at this. Huh? I had Steve Jack. I said, I need you to find me the number one authority on breast milk. I said, I don't look for shit to do, man. Because I had the money. Number one authority on breast milk. So he comes back and he said, it's two people. <laughs> Oxford University, both of them's equal. I said, well, tell them a million dollars apiece. You see, and when you know they men, see how it work? Mm -hmm. The number one authority on breast milk is a man. So I bring him in, take him to a black hospital, Flint Goodrich down in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. So they keep saying to me, why are you giving us this money to do this? What you looking for? I said, I don't know if I'm looking for it. I wouldn't have you here. I don't know what I'm looking for. You think I'm that stupid? I'll pay you this money to find something that I know? What I found out, man, was mind boggling. You got a child. Yes, sir. When your wife would be nursing the baby, the other breast would leak. That's not milk. That's all in part impurities. If she smoked, that's nicotine. If she drank, that's alcohol. If she work in a place where people smoke, all the chemicals that's in the food, that leaks out so the baby can't get it. Hmm? Wow. Hmm? So we go on every day to that. What you looking for? So I, I, I didn't know. So as they was leaving, I said, here's what I'm looking for. My mother's, 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 mother fed. She was the nanny for white women. You all got enough sense to know what's in milk. Hmm? Milk. What's for humans? You don't give a kitten dog milk. Hmm? Yeah. I said the number one cause, the only cause of crib death is cow's milk. Hmm? If you took cow's milk and breast milk from a woman and put it in a glass, you'd have to add 300 times more water with cow's milk to make it look like mother's milk. Because the number one important ingredient in milk is not calcium. You get more calcium eating a piece of newspaper. Hmm? And so, cow's milk 
the number one thing in milk is called casein. Casein makes the bone strong. So cows have, have enough casein to make the cow enough bone strength to deal with thousand pounds or more. Mother's milk, just enough for a maximum of 175 pounds. So when you drink cow's milk mm. with that casein, it becomes glue and shuts it down and some folk in there, they die in the crib, they call it crib death. They mean, we don't know what boss it. That's where every nation on the planet that would never be stupid enough to give their child cow's milk huh? that would never have, never had crib death. Only the countries that knew where out there. Okay. Cow's milk is crib death. So I know I was putting that in my file so I was here. But I was looking to say, because I know milk, I know more about it than you all do. Hmm. I say, how long can my mama's, 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 nurse white children before y'all become niggas? That's what I'm looking for. That's so, all. About 15 years later, they said, Let's thank you for what we learned. So we got back here and got a $50 million grant from the government to pursue your question. And I'm calling you now to tell you this happened. Mm -hmm. Just listen to the white children. Watch the styles change. What used to look like you looks like me now. Listen to the music, how loud they play the music in the whole scene. Two million people come out in the field and get some guitars. <laughs> so I've been knowing this. And so what I'm saying is, is when you sit and look at September the 11th. Them folks, they say they did that, never flew a plane in their life. They say they just was, uh, they learned how to simulate this and all that. Kind of thing. And here's a paper here, say flight school owned by Warren Buffett that they went to. Yes. So he a thug and a dog and a tramp. Flight school owned by Warren Buffett. That's right. And, the, and they only asked to learn how to fly the plane, not land it. Yeah, you hear it? Yes. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. Huh? That's what he said. Yeah. See, that's another trick. Hmm? Why would I go? You know the guy on the plane that, that crashed right here by Pittsburgh? When he called his mama, you know, calling on the plane. Mm -hmm. Hey, mom, this is Dick Brown. You never give your first and last name to your mother. See, they always mess up because they're so stupid. <laughs> Hi, Mom. You're right. You're not... <laughs> Richard, you're going to give your first and last name to your mother, huh? And then, if you look over here, and it says, flight school says FBI train suspects prior to hijack. FBI. Huh? See here? So everybody is walking through this maze and, 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 uh, in the game, the game, the game. So you just look at all the papers, all the papers, and then you say, okay, then I got people I can talk to. Oh, okay. Yo, keep missing. Don't give a fuck. I know who I am. When the universal order pick you, you need no footprints. You want to be recognized by the New York Times and Washington Post, all that good shit. Right. Universal huh? order. I'm asking you as an elder, though, as a young black I'm man. I'm saying that it was bullshit. I okay. don't care. I keep telling you, you don't hear me. Out of your ignorance, you don't hear me, so you're going to keep pushing it. I just told you, I don't give a fuck. I said that. My wife didn't tell you, so I told you. So leave it alone. Hmm? Leave it alone. They got a book out, National Geographic. 1,000. When y'all get back, y'all say, oh, you hit it on the computer. National Geographic, 1,001 people who made America, and I'm listed. Huh? So I called a friend of mine, uh, what's this bullshit about that? And he said, well, they got your CIA file, they know who you are. Hmm? 
Yeah, that's cool. Go home, go back. You got the CIA call? That, 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 yeah, they must they must have been after you. I mean they're just tapping my phone, but they must have written you. That's what you think. You see, I'm using the phone now, as you said. When uh -huh. you make one phone, they all cost the same thing. It's making the first one. So they do the same thing when they're tapping you, they do for the biggest spy in the world. It don't cost nothing else. Hmm? It'll cost you one nickel. Hmm? They do it all. And it keeps them working. <laughs> okay. So it's like the men in black, they got just tapped into everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but we're, um, you know, a lot of people like to feel that we're in a post racial society. That don't make it. A lot of people who, uh, my grandmother thought bullshit. Let me tell you something now. I can take you to the supermarket now and buy you a herb that's 3,000 times more potent than heroin, cocaine. And crack. Mm -hmm. It's called nut nail. Hmm? You ever use it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Nut Okay. As long as they was getting high and didn't know they was getting high. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't violate <follow> Jesus. <laughs> as long as they was getting high. Let me know when you're back on. We're back on. Uh, Let me reframe it. Before we go back to the question you had before we stop, if you take a um, The guy's name they killed in Florida. Oh, Trayvon. Trayvon. Now, this is y'all's fault. Not here, but I'm gonna say. As long as you've been in America, you never mm -hmm. dealt with homicide, news wise. And he didn't talk about more what the guy bought. Now it's different if he bought a ten million dollar diamond. Huh? Then you hear about the homicide. And I cheat because I'm different. I know what we're dealing with. We jumped into this too early. It was effective. All right, I, I made this wider because I know it's your close. So. Let's go back to Trayvon. Hoodies. More white folk wear hoodies than black folks. Go on college campus. The girl playing, boy playing. So I went out and bought me one. So they said he went to the 7-Eleven. All 7 levels have film. How come we never saw a film of him going in there or coming out? Hmm? Mm -hmm. And not till I mention it, I'm one of the most powerful voices because social network didn't get me for free. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So then they showed us some bullshit of him standing at the counter. Come on, y'all. They told us that he was looking. That Sunday was the Sunday of the All-Star Basketball. That he was looking at the All Star game and doing halftime. Mm -hmm. He ran to, well, we all do that. Mm -hmm. Run down, fix your ham and cheese sandwich, or call somebody. Nobody better not call you while the Super Bowl is going on. But the minute it going to a commercial. Uh, so I said, okay, Ralph, I need you to do something for me. I need the time that he was killed. Seven seventeen. Oh, why? The ball game didn't start till eight o'clock. So how could he go during the half? Hour? That's what I'm looking at, not the other bullshit, because I know who they are. Mm -hmm. They are. And I check out Zimmerman. Mm -hmm. Then we get into my zone. Zimmerman lives in an all-black neighborhood. And everybody we interview said he's one of the finest. Uh, oh, hmm. Something ain't right about this. And for four days after he was killed, he was in the morgue. Uh, John Doe, you aware of that? Where Didn't John know. Doe? Okay. We in a predominantly white town. 
So how many black folks you get there at that moment? Hmm? And sit there four days? Hmm? Hmm. Killed on Sunday. Hmm. So, is that back on? Yeah, I don't know. Do it say off? It's off sign? Yeah, it's on stop. Yeah, it's strange. And so the world, they don't want you to know. We don't, then they don't want us to know the truth. Mr. Yeah, but they didn't. My mama didn't want me to know the truth. She never told me about sex. So don't blame it on them. Okay. Huh? Whole oh, lots of things she didn't want me to know about. She didn't want me to know about Islam. Hmm? That started at home. Hmm? And so, and, and, and so what happens is Monday morning. Kill Sunday. Mm -hmm. Five cops, they've all been fired. And uh, Chapman <laughs> came by the house where his daddy was living with his girlfriend mm -hmm. and brought him a picture. And he identified him on Monday, but he still laid in that mark for three days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a John Doe. Mama called in the police station, they got him listed as a missing person. Three days. And then you ask yourself a question. Whew. There's something ain't right about this. So the undertaker from Miami, where the son lived, mm -hmm. came and picked up the body. Now put a pin there, because you know about that youngster in Valdesta, Georgia, where they found him wrapped up in this. The same undertaker handled his body. Oh, mm. from Florida? All the black undertakers we have, we still got them because white folks wouldn't handle you. Mm -hmm. hmm? You come all the way from there to get the body and the organs is missing? What about Trayvon's organs? It's a guy in you. You drive by, huh? You know any black cops in? Oh, do I? Yeah. yeah. Then ask them when they go to a drive by, 98% of them headshots. Mm -hmm. You can't be in a car driving and hit me in the head, man. Huh? Mm. And then look at this. If the three of us are just a bunch of hoodlums and thugs and just foul, mind, and evil and nasty, so we just go in the black community and just shoot black folks. Mm -hmm. How come they ain't shooting women? Where'd they get the integrity? Men's organs sell for more than women's. Hmm? Mm -hmm. In China, before the number one sell, it out organs outsell prostitution, drugs, and counterfeit money. That's the number one money maker on the planet. Number one. Well, not, now you got me. You want to ask you about the prison industrial complex? No, wait, wait, you don't need to stay here. No, wait, 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 wait. Okay. China, before organs, they brought you before the firing squad, they shoot you in your heart. Now they shoot you in the head and harvest everything down. Hmm? Hmm. It's the big money maker. Hmm? And then I asked another question. As hip as America is with all of its technology, we do shit that would make German and them Nazis look like wimps. Do you think 30 members from the KGB could hook up with 30 members of British intelligence, could hook up with 30 members from French intelligence and slip in this country with all the stuff we got? Then how are you going to let them tell you that in three weeks, 65,000 little children from South America, little tots, can't read or write, come in this country and we didn't know it? That's organ stealing, man. Mm. Huh? Just ask yourself a question. Huh? Mm. President said, now, all you got to do is track them. You can't track them? You have, a, you have any children? I do not. He does. Okay. Then you understand motherhood, not fatherhood. Motherhood. Mm. Huh? No mother is going to take her child 
to some pimps that they say cost five thousand. Where they get that five thousand dollars? Where they get that kind of money? Huh? Mm. Where they get that kind of money to pay some bad people? No mother's gonna trust her child with a thug and mm. let that child go by itself. Yeah, that's, that's man stuff. Mm. Hmm? And when they say they send them back, how do we know? Hmm? How do we know they sent them back? Hmm? It's a good question. And so, and, and, and so when you stop and think about uh, Rodney King, go back and especially the business you're in. Mm -hmm. This week, pull that film or that beating, mm -hmm. and you see something incredible. That's lighted like a Hollywood movie. Look at the movie, The Pirate. Mm -hmm. Well, every pirate I've seen in the movie was white. And all of them had a patch and a peg leg. And they show this movie here, and this brother ain't got no... They, they won't even let you, even when you acting like what they say the pirate was, you mm -hmm. know. But my problem with the pirate was that whole thing over there in Africa. I said, wait, something ain't right about this. Something is not right about this. What is it? Oh, you're talking about Captain Phillips. Yeah. But I'm talking about before. Okay. When it first hit. Mm -hmm. That little country, them black folk came out of, they don't have five rowboats. Okay? Mm -hmm. But they're going to attack the mightiest navies in the world? Come on, y'all. Huh? Are you crazy? They ain't got five rowboats. Then almost they make a movie out of it. That's how they just keep putting it in, putting it in. Then they make you think it's going to get a time. One of one, their top actors to do it. It's bullshit. Huh? One of them tankers had 100 million gallons of oil. So I'm on TV doing one of them TV shows, and I said, wait a minute. I can handle that for you. Give it to them. Ain't a black man on this planet that know how to sell 100 million gallons of oil that's been stolen. Huh? So then all at once, you, you sit and you look, and then it stopped. It just stopped. Hmm? Mm -hmm. That's right. right there, where that was coming from, is one of the most evil, vicious Navy bases in the history of the planet. They do stuff that would make Hitler look like Santa Claus. Diego Garcia. So, uh, wait, 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 wait. wait. I'm sorry. Diego Garcia. That's where that first Malaysian plane is. That's where it landed. Mm -hmm. Had four scientists on it. Huh? Twenty scientists, but four had filed for patent. It was Malaysia, but they worked out of Austin, Texas for Texas Instrument. All right. And the ones behind that plane was Texas Instrument, the government, and Boeing, who made the plane. And everybody is stupid enough to believe that a plane almost a block long can just disappear. With the electronics we have, all the technology we have, the next generation of cars will come out, there'll be no driver. So when I was talking to this scientist about it, I said, well, that paddy wagons too. He said, yeah, why you ask that? I said, well, there's just more room to put riders. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's where we are. About 10 years ago, I'm with a scientist, and he's saying to me, he said, you know, the smart car, when it come out, there can be no more automobile fatalities. I said, why you going to mess with me, man? They've been had that. Why you think airplanes don't run into one another? Huh? I used to do that when I was a child. I used to play with them little, uh, what's those? Magnets. Magnets. Yeah. And if you don't put them right, they can't hit. That's all you. That's all y'all done. And they won't come convince me that, that y'all breathing. You're not. Just been here, okay? And so when you stop and think about, you know, the the, the stuff. Left. So we got four of those top scientists mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that had filed for patents worth four hundred billion dollars. So if one, two, three of us mm -hmm. and your brother, four, we file for patents. And then here's a friend of y'all's who's with us. So five of us file for patents. 
if we die before the patent is granted, then your brother, who wasn't on the plane with us, he owns them all. Mm. So those four scientists and the fifth person was the Carlisle Group. Mm. They own them all now. The patent was granted three days after the plane was missing. Wow. <laughs> okay. And so what I'm saying is this is this is the game, and if you can't follow that thread, then you don't you don't see it. That's crazy. What were the patents for? Huh? What were the patents for? Well, the patents was you heard people talk about they're gonna one day inject you and can control you. Well, these guys come up with something they don't have to inject you. They just put it in this room and you come in and you smell it. That's that's what they were for. Okay. And that's why they killed them. That's they might have not killed them. They might just let them sit there and die. I was the first Negro in the history of America to run for president of the United States. Mm -hmm. Now, if that's wrong, then tell me who ran before me. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you. Mm. 1968. Jesse Jackson. Sure. Yeah. Mm. They didn't run for president. They ran in the primary. Mm. If you don't win the primary, then you cannot run. Right. I was in the race. The only Negro in the history of America that ran for president mm -hmm. of the United States. I ran as a write-in. Mm -hmm. And so had Obama not won, I'd still been the only Negro. Mm -hmm. So a funny thing happened that night. That was 1968, mm -hmm. I ran, November the 4th. This article ran four days later. You see the date on that, November the what? November 7, 1968. And what newspaper? Page 6 of the Wall Street Journal. Okay, now listen to me now. This didn't run in no other paper. So y'all mm -hmm. want to understand about this country, you see. Wall Street Journal. One of the most respected papers in the world by fools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, read the headline. Election computer goofs gives Gregory 9 million votes. Now, stop there. Some white folks, against my better judgment, fought to put me on the ballot mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania. So, when the election Polls was closed. Mm -hmm. Cuba gave me nine million. Election Center set it down and said the projected president of the United States is Dick Gregory. Wow. That plurality cannot be overcome. Okay? This is your America. What they meant to do was plug that up to Nixon mm. and somebody gooped. So That's your vote what, is hold, not hold, a vote. Hold, hold, hold. Listen to me now. All right. That's what shapeshifter mean when you know who you are. Now, read that first paragraph. Uh, take. Right. The first. Or just, Some machines just aren't to be to be believed. Take the big computer in New York that was designed to compile results of Tuesday's general election. At one point early yesterday morning, the machine was crediting Dick Gregory, the comedian turned presidential candidate, with 9 million votes in Pennsylvania. Now, see, they don't know, and the ones do know that they wouldn't say it. The fact that no other paper ran that. <laughs> then you know, okay. Go ahead, now okay. listen to it. Now, go ahead. This was just one of the scores of an accurate and sometimes astonishing. Just get to read no more. That's it. Over there to your left, what did Walter Cronkite say up there? Uh, CBS anchorman Walter Cronkite, after the errors were pointed out to him, apologized for not questioning the figures. <laughs> That's said, the bullshit that comes in. Who was right. he to question a damn figure? So mm. was the computer wrong or you got 9 million votes? I got 9 million votes because they plugged it up wrong. They made a mistake okay. and started and hooked it to my name. Mm. Okay? Instead of Nixon's name. Okay. Hmm? So yeah, it was it showing how they were doing that all the way back in 1968? Huh? You what? They've nah, been doing this. Showed how they were fixing the election. No, 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 man. Since day one. Come on. You serious? They was doing it before they had 
what they would do when I ran for mayor of Chicago. White boy and the brother came to me and offered me a half a million dollars, not to get out the race, but to get on the ballot. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I got to get a petition to know we already got that. Mm -hmm. So the white boy said to the brother, give me my $100. And I said, what's that about? He said, this is your brother. He bet me $100, you take the money, and I bet him you wouldn't. Mm -hmm. And the brother was so embarrassed. He winked at me and said, uh, uh, this boy, everybody hooked up at, after midnight. He said, I'll meet you out there and show you something. So I'll go out. He said, what was going to happen if you open up the com Well, let me ask you this here. Uh, Y'all registered to vote? Yeah. So in the last four years, how many times did you have the opportunity to vote in the last four years? Um. Six times. Six times in four years. Mm -hmm. So if you had an automobile in four years, you use it six times, then the garage where you keep it determines what kind of ride you're going to have, not you. Mm -hmm. Same thing about a voting machine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, here's what they do. Okay. He said, we were, you on line five, the only on line four. Mm -hmm. So we take this wire and hook it around five, so every time somebody pulls forward, registers for daily. Mm. That's how they do it. Okay. Mm. That's it. Yeah. That's how they do it. It's just simple. They've been doing that for years. Yeah. And so that, that so, so somewhere. That's how they do it. Mm. And, uh, not impartial. And so anyway, what's some more questions you want? Then we out of here. When you get home, you punch up your, your computer in there. The, the, the truth about uh, your Social Security, you know about that? All Social Security is owned by the Vatican. Well, I heard not not Social Security, birth certificate by the Vatican, traded every day on the New York Stock Exchange. Right. Mm -hmm. When you get your child's Social Security number, you sign them into the corporation. That's, that's right. That's right. So as long as you don't get them. And then it also, then your, the, the other piece, you know, London is not part of Britain. And so just when you punch it up, the truth about London, in order for Queen Elizabeth to go to London, she got to get permission from the Lord Mayor to give it to her. She got to come dressed as a servant through the temple gate, and they back there dressed like devils. It's a whole. You know? So I just say, God, thank you, because it's too hard to teach, teach black folks with all the stuff they got in their head. You can't get the misinformation out. So here it comes down the chute. That's what the... When the fifth dimension did the song, the dawning of the age of that white boy knew it would be 15 years. That's why it was called the dawning of the age of Aquarius. So Aquarius came in May the 5th, the year 2000. That meant darkness is over. That represents men and all the wrong stuff. Now, lightness is here, so women, as they turn out. You see, at one time, it wasn't nobody on this planet but women, okay? And they fucked up. And so here we here. So if I'm married to your mother, she's married to me, and we drug addicts, then there's a possibility you'd be born a drug addict. So that's what happened to them. They fucked up so bad, they degenerated till they produced men, and then they paid a hell of a price. Yeah, I heard it was a matriarchal society, and then they, um, yeah. they let the men rule and, and at one point, and then like you said, they just got so yeah. jacked up. Yeah. You know, but they don't want to relinquish power. When they don't have, have to. They, they, they don't have to, man. You had it for six thousand years. You don't even know it. You don't even know why you're here. The one thing you got to ask yourself, then you see how vicious this is. When the greatest human specimens, they didn't produce a Muhammad Ali during the Roman Empire. Look at him. <sighs> hmm. <clears throat> and the white boys. They never said they was going to kill him. They said, we're going to shut your what? My great grandma. Didn't they? Yeah, he can't talk. Didn't he? See, that's, that's the ones I hang out with. <laughs> can't talk. Did y'all see the basketball finals? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We see when the line fell on the floor? Mm -hmm. They say he had cramps? Yeah. You ever had cramps in bed? Yes. Don't you have to get up and walk? 
Yeah. You don't lay down with Cram that was throwing the games. Mm-hmm. See how it works? Mm-hmm. This is something you know. You jump off that bed and, and, and mm-hmm. keep moving until they leave. And then as good an athletes, and how come none of the other athletes have cramps? Mm-hmm. Since the air condition was off. <laughs> mm-hmm. See how it works? And so y'all go to Philadelphia. And they took a little fat, chubby white boy. And did a thing called, what was the name of the movie? The fight movie. Rocky. Mm-hmm. And you go all over the world. Who's the greatest fighter that ever lived? They say Rocky, not Muhammad Ali. See how it works? Character. That works. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, we, we talk about that. See, um, they don't know it's a fictional character. All they know is Rocky. Right. And then right here in this town, you had a great fighter that lived what? Like, Two miles from here, the black guy, what's his name? Huh? Larry, Larry Holmes and Joe Frazier. No, Joe Frazier, Larry Holmes. <laughs> Joe Frazier. But ain't no, ain't no statue of him up them steps. We're working on that. No, you ain't. No, 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 no. Just trust me. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time. You bucking something bigger than you know. Put it someplace else. Hmm? Put it someplace else. Okay. Okay. You're not doing it. See, that's where we come through. We think we. Huh? Martin Luther King, two hundred million dollar statue on the mall, and you think you had something to do with it? Hmm? He left here. He was the most hated man in the world. How can you hate me outside of here, unless in America's feeding that? And now he's the most beloved because <laughs> they finding out some stuff about they didn't know. Hmm? They have before they had the FBI and the CIA. And, it was Army Intelligence. Army Intelligence have been spying on the King family for 105 years, and you think this shit just started? They knew who he was when we didn't. Huh? Grandfather, granddaddy, him. And they use you two planes on King. Hmm? See how it works? <laughs> yeah, so we'll talk about Barack then. Huh? Barack and his, his bloodline. No, no, no. We don't need to talk about Rocky if you just read that. Okay. Huh? Okay. Hmm? The fix was in. Well, see, when you keep pushing, it gets the gossip. Okay, I'm sorry. You read it. I read it. Okay, I'm sorry. Not in Jet Magazine. Huh? I'm just trying to understand. No, no, you can't buy it. I'm not here to teach you. Okay. I'm here to give you information. Okay. Okay? To give to other people. That's all I'm telling you. You read it. That's why I gave it to you. Hmm? And a lot of stuff I knew I wouldn't give it to people because if I show it to you on the internet and white folks told you, you you'd believe it. And you you say you wouldn't, but no, I know. I, I've been a black person longer than most of y'all. So I know what I did. Hmm? I know what I did. Hmm? did and you? I know what I had to do to get out of it. And right now I got to go to Europe next week. My first class round trip ticket cost me $27,000. The tax on it. Go to this government. They buy bombs and poison to, to drop on people all over the world and children. So when they fall on my children, they're different between me and most of y'all. I'm honest enough to say, what well, took you so long? I'm part of the fucking filth. Every time you buy a loaf of bread, you feed into this nastiness. So what makes think you so clean, huh? Hmm? I got ten children. Hmm? Ten children. I never had a fair with my wife to create gods, another god. I just give me some pussy, man. So how filthy am I? When I look in the mirror, I see who I am. I never owned a car. I didn't know the year, the make, the model, the down payment, hmm? the trade in, the license I had to pay for. When I look at me, and I know I put more research on owning a car than creating God's new life. So who in the fuck am I? At least I get nothing out unless I'm honest when I say God. <laughs> I know it's coming, but just let me sit up on the mountain with some binoculars and watch them. <laughs> watch them. 
just, they didn't come on get me, but you know. When they said I had the worst form of cancer, y'all know I had the worst form of cancer? You can have. I read about it. So Uncle Tom, my son, the school teacher, I said, son, we need somebody in the family that understands God's body. Mm. The U.S. Capitol used to be here. Have you ever asked yourself, well, if y'all gonna move it, why you just move it 90 miles? Hmm? Why you just leave it here? Why you just move it 90 miles? Hmm? Of course, if you understand astronomy, all this town, everything gonna be destroyed when the sun explodes. Except St. Louis, Kansas City, Washington, D.C. area, most of Atlanta, most of Georgia, and most of North Carolina. That's why all the military bases. <laughs> It's put that. They know what we got to do is astronomy. You can look at astronomy and go back a, a million years this way, a million years this way, and you see what happens. <laughs> you know, that's a game. Huh? And and so consequently, he don't know. Or he knows that's why he's not, you're not, you're not here. Okay. And probably the next president could be black. Next election. Um, see, the Republicans always have to put a black person in, but this one they ain't ready for. And uh, what's his name? Uh, Herman King. Why you do that? <laughs> no, I'm asking you for a reason. Because he's, well, I understand he's the uh, head of the restaurant. Um, no, why were you shaking your head? But I'm saying if he were to get in, it would just be. He wanted to breed minds on the planet. He was chairman of the Kansas City Federal Reserve. Huh? And when I saw him with these buckwig speech, I said, oh, uh, here you go. Here you go. If you know how rich I am and see me out there in some raggedy clothes, when I leave and go and see the homeless, all I got to do is look at your damn shoes. They forget to take off them $400 pair of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is a game, man. And then once you see it, then know it. And see it. And I pray every day forgiveness, man, because I had this power before I knew it. I could have killed some folks and not even known it. That's what anger is. And filth is. Anger. Every time you have a sexual discharge out of your prostate, See, your, your sperms live at a your body temperature two degrees below your body temperature. That's why the old folks used to call it two below. Hmm? The temperature. So they didn't need this and that. All they do is put some ice on their nuts and they couldn't get your sister pregnant because the sperms would be killed. Hmm? That's why in the summertime you see men walk, you see, you see baseball players, they don't want to play. You see baseball players out there, they do that. Baseball players, they do that and then do that. That's the testicles. The body's heating up, okay? Why do you think fantastic athletes can't produce fantastic sun athletes? Because of the jock strap. That's why the Arabs always wore the pants that hung down where the testicles could move down and up. And for years, truck drivers couldn't have babies because the motor, the engine was right under the seat. <laughs> they nuts would get too hot, huh? Who yeah, I work? You were talking mathematics a few minutes ago. Yeah, but here, watch, watch this now. In my testicles, every time I have a discharge, 500 million sperms come out. And the prostate have to give them the electrical charge. That's why we got so much prostate cancer, because I'm trying to get my man here to do my dick. That's why I call it good pussy. Hmm? Do my dick. And the universal God, see, here's how you find out the universal God. I teach this to my grandchildren. The dinosaur left this planet two billion years ago. You know that. There was no church. There was no Christianity. Hmm? If my mother was alive and walked in here now, you think God could just spit her out. She's so precious and nice and 
godly. But if you tried to explain to my mother Jesus Christ wasn't a Christian, she'd stomp your ass to death. Because her ignorance didn't do her to know that Christianity never happened to 300 years after Jesus Christ was dead. Mm. <laughs> Mama. Mama. Hmm? I didn't learn until I was a grown man that the cross... <laughs> They didn't invent that for Jesus. The Roman was using that a thousand years before he was born. It was special. You know, they beheaded folks, hanged folks. Hmm? The cross was for revolutionists. And so if you and your mother and your father was walking down the street, no, I had no cars, none of that. Huh? You didn't travel within six miles from where you was born. Where were you going? Everything was the same. Trees, mountains. Hmm? So as you walk with your mother and father going to the mill to get some wheat to bake some bread, you saw this folks were going across. So your mother, you said, what's that? They said, oh, those are bad people. They were trying to do something to the government. So the cross represented revolution. So you would never want to be a revolutionist. So the problem with that story is, Jesus was a revolutionist. What was them two thieves doing up there? Uh-uh, caught you. Mm -hmm. Earlier, you spoke about there's a new generation that's not going to listen to what we were told. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and they, they're fearless. And I kind of feel that way. How do we activate or educate them to direct that fearlessness? You you're a fool. I'm a fool. Okay. Okay. You can but I mean to, to direct no, 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 that no. energy. There you go. I got to override your ignorance. Now. <laughs> okay. Hmm? I got a cousin, Muslim. I said, Merry Christmas. He said, Man, I don't celebrate no whitey Christmas holiday. I said, Brother, let me tell you, anytime you in America and Christmas fall on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, your bank closed, you celebrate. Hmm? <laughs> hmm? Okay, this is a game we play. Right. I go to church and see my black minister, and right behind him is a white Jesus. I go to the Muslim church and I see my brother Elijah Muhammad and right behind him is a white boy named Farad. I see the same thing. Hmm? Is that scary? I see the same thing. Hmm? The same thing. Oh, the Bible, man. I, I read it. I, I like certain parts of it. I like David. King David. Now, what I'm telling you now is not in Hustler magazine. It's in the Bible. David looked across the balcony and saw that man's wife and sent for her. This in the Bible. They just say words and get no, but he pleasured her. Then he get her pregnant. You know the story. And he sends for her husband so she can get black. I learned that out of the Bible. <laughs> they got shocked. He said he didn't have nothing to do with me because while his men was down on the front line fighting, he didn't want pleasure. So David in the Bible killed her husband. <laughs> Not Hustler magazine. My mother didn't know that King James was king of England. She just thought God sent him here to write this. She didn't know King James was such a weird, strange homosexual. He hated women so bad he killed his mother and his lover was Buckingham Palace. Will Buckingham, his, his name was, his, his lover was Lord Buckingham, who Buckingham Palace is named after. Oh, come on, y'all. Hmm. So where do you go? Where, 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 where do it go, you know? And so one day, I knew a woman in Chicago. Black woman. She's dead, but it, we went to Philly and killed all the white folks. In the Four Seasons, if I made a call to her before the police got there, you wouldn't go to jail. That's who we are. Hmm? Mother Gibson, we are shapeshifters, and the real white folks that know that. Hmm? Uncle Tom. Hmm? Hmm. When Harriet Beecher. Hmm? Hold on, Uncle Tom's cabin. She knew who it was. Do you know that book translated into plays 
and never before in the history of the planet have as many companies went around the world doing that play. Mm. When it got to uh, Saigon, the king of Saigon said, if I give you the money, would you do a musical? And he did a musical called The King and I. That's Uncle Tom's cat. One of the big hits on Hollywood, big, big, two years ago, was The Book of Mormon. That's Uncle Tom's cat. Ignorance is a bitch, isn't it? Mm. And when you break that little piece, you got so much more, but you just satisfied there and keep your mouth shut, and the others will come to you. People will come to you. People are here know. But, so just to clarify, who uh, shapeshifters being black man or shapeshifters? I used to hear old black folks say, "There's some folks over there in Africa that white folks ain't never messed with and never will. They can turn into gorillas and and." Animals and, and I just thought that meant they just strong. I didn't know they could do that. You know how you can sound like a cat, mm. sound like a dog. We also have the power to turn into them. Mm. But we saw over here in the unviolated the whole universe so bad, man. Hair. I don't think here black from a bad hair and good. Hair. No, no, wait, wait. My mama said God made. Them Negroes with bad and good hair. See, hair didn't come from Sears and Roebuck. Mm. Mm -hmm. So you think you love God so much, you think God made bad hair? <laughs> and made good hair? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you still like him? Mm? No, your hair is to your body what a leaf is to a tree. And that whole process of photosynthesis. <laughs> so when you cut it, I learned it because I spent some time on the Indian Reservation fighting for some rights. Went to jail. I was. And I noticed all the Indians in the tribe who never had haircuts, they didn't have mustache, beards, goatees, sideburns. The universal God said, you fool, but I'm so nice to you. When you do that, I'm going to let it grow back. So why you think you shaved this morning, this evening, you got to shave again? That's the God talking to you saying you're violating me. Hmm? Mm. Now, if we cops bulletproof vests, won't keep us from getting shot, but it'll change the rhythm so we don't die. Mm. Mm. That's what nappy hair is because of your melanin. The sun cannot come in at the speed it comes in without running you crazy. So God twisted it so it got to go through them cars to slow up. <laughs> mm. Y'all coming in with these haircuts, and I know who you are when you come in. <laughs> You don't know. Haircuts. Mm. It's a violation of God. Hmm? Mm. So I know who I'm talking with. I know who I'm dealing with. I never would have got into this if we didn't go this way. Mm -hmm. huh? That's what this is about. Why do you think when you take your son to the barber shop, they holler and cry? Why do you think when your wife comb your daughter's hair, she scream and holler? Hmm? And when you really know who we are, is there is a God that say before, ah, you God. Sit back and watch you reduce the dignity that I gave you for some white folks who you can get your rent paid and your hair and take care of you because I will destroy you from the inside. There we are. So where are we headed? Heading? Yeah. It's over. It's over. Mm. You don't understand that because you've got that mentality. You're not connected to that universal God. Mm. Right now. If I got it. Kidney. Hmm. Kidney. The Alice machines. Mm -hmm. hmm. Black men is 4% of America's population. 4%. Ninety, eighty-two percent of prostate cancer deaths is black men, and we don't take this camera and say, "Wait a minute, man, this is impossible." We got a country. We're almost six hundred million people, and we four <laughs> percent black women, six percent. There's population. Ninety-eight percent. 
a fiber or two was his black woman. But your sister, your wife, your mother, and you don't have nothing to say, wait a minute, something ain't right about this. Hmm? Something ain't right about this. Huh? Why? Because you've been reduced down to that field. Huh? Ninety eight percent fiber or black women. The other next highest percent is Jewish women. What the Jewish women, black women got, got nappy hair. Hmm? <laughs> See how it works? That's the game. Connected the dots here. So if you go with your camera tomorrow to Philly and go by the dialysis machines, it's 90% black folk. Hmm? What causes kidneys to, to break down? Hmm? Fear? Paranoia? Anguish. Took me a long time to run somebody that was a Japanese son, Chinese scientist at the University of Chicago. Here's what caused it. Fear. You're scared. A white boy scared. He's going to take my job. You know in your subconscious mind a white boy can stop you leaving here and take your car and there's a damn thing you can do about it. You can talk that black shit if you want to. Take your car. Condemn your house tonight and tell all y'all to get out. Tonight. You got a stop sign in front of your house? No black person can do, have that stop sign move. They can do it while y'all here. You go back to normal stop sign. Okay. That's who we live with, right? Fear, paranoia, and anger. What cools us out? <laughs> Awareness and gentleness. Hmm? Awareness and gentleness. Never. I used to hear the old folks when, when, when a black woman would die from cirrhosis. Oh, I didn't know she drank. 98% of people die from cirrhosis to the liver and never had to drink alcohol in their life. Um, what causes cirrhosis to the liver? Anger, rage, <laughs> depression. <laughs> you got to be depressed in a system like this if you're not crazy. Go to a nut house and look at them. They're just so happy. Hmm? That's what crazy is about. Hmm? Not knowing. Not having to be responsible. They're just so happy. 90 years old, I had an aunt. 90 years old, looked like she was 15. Hmm? Hmm? Well, what cools deliver out? Kindness and balance. Look like if I just went to the black church. That's what they talk about. They don't know. Hmm? More people in America die every year from lung cancer, from grief, than smoking cigarettes. Hmm? And I used to hear them black folks, man, say she just grieving herself to death. She didn't know the breakdown, but you don't have to know the breakdown when you got that connected. Hmm? Liver? Whew. Liver? Kindness and balance. Lung cancer. Grief? <laughs> Sadness and shame. Hmm? Shame on my hair, shame on my nose, shame on my lips. What cools it out? Courage, righteousness, love, and being lovable. I've been married 55 years because I told my wife we got married. My marriage was cool. I got a pregnant. I told her I to go do that mumbo jumbo bullshit. I said, yeah, You love me, but if you want this to work, it's about can you be lovable? I love you, baby. If I can't have you, nobody can. No, I'm like, oh, God, no. Seventy-nine percent of all mad folks in America ends up in divorce. How long will it take you to know what it ain't about? It's love. Can you be lovable? Lovable. It's a rhythm. It's a rhythm. Your baby would turn around in the crib. You straighten them up, right? We all supposed to sleep with our head north. The babies know that. And old dumb us, we fuck them up so they fuck them before they get in grade school. In the bed. You know, they never turned all the way around the bed. Hmm? Right here. You're never supposed to eat two things at one time. That's why when you give a child a hot dog, the little, they take the hot dog off the bun, they don't eat the hot dog, they don't eat the bun. <laughs> when you sit there and they eat the french fries by itself, and, Fuck up, or who are you, a ignorant motherfucker that is not recognized by the universal God? Hmm? Hmm. You part of it. 
Ain't no, oh, well, I'm better than, no, 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 no. The same God that made the Germans made the Jews. <laughs> Not the church. Hmm? The same God that made the slave made the slave master. Hmm? And what did I do to mess up? I'm over there taking God's body, putting bones in my nose and plates in my lips, and God said, okay, nigga, I'm going to send you to the body mess up, and we still got a problem with our nose and our lips. That's how it works. You can flush it out the jeans. Hmm? That's how it works. Hmm? And so when you stop and think about where it's going, it's going to be gone. When a woman gets nine months pregnant, the baby going to fall if it means death to the mother and the child. And take your poor, black, ignorant, uneducated woman and an uneducated white woman and take all the armies in the world when that water bag breaks, see if they can keep the baby in her. <laughs> so, so when I found out what I had, I went out and said me a little prayer. No bullshit prayer. Mm. Hey, champ, if... This is your son, and he keeps sending messages to you through me. Don't that bother you? Hmm? So why God need to send a message to a preacher? Hmm? Hmm? You hear me? What's that about? And so when you stop and think about, so I go talk to, hey, hey, champ, I talk to God like I was my father. Hey, champ, boy, you really fucked up. Really fucked up. I know you're busy. I know you got a whole universe to run and all that shit. My mama think you can do that, but I, I know. I mean, you probably tired and this slip through. Let me tell you something, God. This is my prayer. It's a lot of niggas deserve cancer, but I'm not one of them. Now, if you need some help, I'll give you 12, a list of 12 niggas. Hmm? And if you want something close to the house, I can do that too. Hmm? Then I looked in here. Say cancer, this is my body. I didn't mess with you. I'm not gonna let you mess with me. You got 72 hours to get out of here. And after that, I'm gonna roll on you. I told you, right, he showed the thing, so he did it on the show. And 72 hours later, white. Dr. Krishna called me. He said, Dick Gurley, I heard you on the Joe Madison, Joe Madison talking about. He said, there's some water in El Salvador. I wouldn't take care of that in five days. I went down five days. It's over. Hmm? Hmm? It's gone. That's what's on this planet. Hmm? Anything you got, that water will get rid of. Hmm? That's simple. <laughs> That's simple. But you got to be connected with the real one. Oh, here's the one you can punch up. Punch up. Why a fellow Google, why a fellow judge? <clears throat> why a federal judge? Sealed all of Obama's college records for 75 years. Pepperdine, Harvard, University of Chicago, Columbia. Because he never went there, man. Motherfucker ain't never been to college in his life. That's what we're dealing with here. Obama's. Obama's classmate reveals why college are concealed. Federal judge slams Obama's capital attitude. No, we don't have to go a little, we'll to go a little further than that. We can read the rest of that shit. Okay. But if it wasn't in there, I wouldn't tell you because niggas are so much for you wouldn't believe me, but that white boy tell you you believe me. I know that because I've been one. Huh? And still. Mm -hmm. That's what this shit is about, man. Mm -hmm. Thank you, brother. You're welcome.